NetSim being a discrete event simulator, the event trace records every single event that occurs during the simulation. This file is especially useful when debugging the code. As you can see, the event trace is a still more larger file with several hundred thousand lines in it. We will now debug through the code by placing breakpoints in the code. The code will break in runtime as the simulation is running. Users will be able to see the values of different variables. For this purpose, I will now place a breakpoint in the 802.115.c file. Users can debug the code either by running NetSim via GUI by adding a getch in, in it or via CLI. I will now show you a debugging using GUI. For this purpose, I am going to add a getch in the init function. Then I am rebuilding the code to obtain a DLL. The newly built DLL has to be replaced in the NetSync's bin folder. I am renaming the original file before replacing the modified one. I will now rerun the network scenario in NetSync. As you can see, backend has stopped as we have added a KCH. Now we will attach Visual Studio to the current running process of NetSim. As you can see, the code has stopped at the line where we have placed a breakpoint. I will now add variables to watch. As the simulation progresses, we can see that the values of the variables keep changing. The event detail structure contains variables like event ID which contains the current event ID and event time and the type of event and the pa current packet which has the packet ID, packet type, source, destination, transmitter and receiver IDs. It also has structures corresponding to each layer. We will now correlate this with the event trace and the packet trace. So moving on to the event trace, we will now filter out the event ID 149. As you can see, the event ID is 149 and it is a timer event and the event time is 22974 millisecond and the in device involved is device ID 4 and other details like the packet ID, segment ID, protocol name, and the sub event type etc. We will now correlate the current e packet 
that is dis displayed in the variable with the packet trace. For this purpose, we will use the file layer arrival time for filtering the packet in the packet trace. So go into the app data. So go into the file layer. The file layer arrival time is 22206 millisecond. So This is the packet that is currently displayed in the code and as you can see the source ID is 4 and the transmitter ID is also 4. And since it is a broadcast packet, it is sent to all the nodes in the network scenario. Users can thus use packet trace, event trace and code breakpoints to debug the code that they develop. This is a very powerful feature by which users can drill down deep and correlate the packet trace, event trace and the code. NetSim is currently the only network simulation software that allows you to link and study all these in runtime. We will show you another section of VANET code and let us see how the mobility.txt file is read. For this purpose, I will rerun the network scenario. And add breakpoints in the file base mobility.c file. And I will also attach the process as previously done to the current running that's in process. As you can see, the code has stopped at the place we've added a breakpoint. I will now add additional variables to watch. End device ID from file which contains the current device ID that is read from the file and the x, y and z coordinates. I will also co correlate this with the mobility.txt file. So the initial positions that are read from the file, currently it is the, the variable displays the initial positions of device 0. which is 1.65191 and 0. Similarly, it is being read for device ID 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. I will add one more breakpoint to this code to see how the device positions with respect to time is being read from the mobility file. For this purpose, I will add additional variables to watch which is time from file which contains the time that is being read from the file and the present simulation time. As the simulation progresses, the values are being read from the file and I will correlate this with the mobility file. So currently, 
the time from file is 5 seconds and the device ID is 1. So at 5 seconds, device 1 has x coordinates 1.65, y 186.35 and z 3.47. Thus, we were able to show you how the output file of Sumo is read and taken as input into NetSync. Moving on to research areas in Vanets. Mobility modeling. Since two vehicles remain within the communication range for a matter of seconds, it is an open research issue to develop rich topology model for Vanet that will differ from traditional network topologies. For mobility modeling, NetSync can input vehicle position coordinates from traffic simulators like Sumo. Furthermore, we can modify those movements or simply set random motion. Quality of service. It may be a challenging issue both for network engineers and researchers to utilize the available bandwidth allocated for VANET to improve delivery of messages as well as to develop adaptive quality of service routing protocols that will establish new routes quickly and efficiently. NetSIM provides support for via 802.11e. Scalability. It is expected that VANET must work in very low density areas such as roads and highways as well as in situations with very high traffic density areas such as cities urban areas where traffic jams are high and major intersections exist on road. The standard version of NetSIM supports up to 500 vehicles while the Pro version supports more than 10,000 vehicles. Security A malicious node can cause great harm for vehicle drivers and passengers as well as decrease the performance of the whole network. So an essential research issue is to develop a robust security solution for the VANET network. Network attacks like sinkhole attack involving a malicious node has already been implemented in NetSIM. In addition, an intrusion detection system IDS, to detect such network attacks has also been implemented in NetSIM. Future developments of VANETs in NetSIM in our next version of NetSim, we would be having an improved user interface especially dedicated to VANETs. The GUI would show roads, traffic lights and other components similar to Sumo. The animation is expected to be dynamically linked with Sumo and we would be able to control movements in Sumo. There would be options to control animation speed, a panel for showing message transfer and path it follows actual simulation time and sumo simulation time shown separately. The next release would support IEEE 1609 standard which is dedicated to vehicle networks. We will now show you a short video on the beta version of NetSim which has a dedicated GUI for panel. Here is an example sumo scenario. and an equivalent scenario in NetSim. The bottom left has the GUIs dedicated for VANET. You can also see the packet animation and the current source, destination, packet, simulation time and real time shown dynamically. Now, as we are reaching the end of our presentation, we would like to say that you can see more videos and recorded webinars on NetSim in our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel has videos on NetSim external interfacing, R&D projects in NetSim and all our monthly webinars and NetSim features. We also have a code and documentation available in our file exchange.
Here you have source codes for intrusion detection system in Manets, interfacing NetSim with Sumo, leech protocols, sinkhole attacks in Manet, etc. This concludes our presentation for the webinar. If you have any questions, please write to us. We'll respond to your questions via email. For further information on this tool, you can check our website at www.tedcost.com or our YouTube channel that is youtube.com slash tedcost.